My name is John Hollander. Uh, I brought the uh, LX521 uh, Minis uh, to the competition uh, today. So the uh, LX521s uh, are famous uh, Siegfried Linkwitz uh, dipole speaker. So I really liked the shape. It was very interesting. Uh, and I followed uh, Linkwitz uh, for a number of years in terms of his uh, open baffle dipole speakers. So I knew that he liked or considered that shape of the LX521 to be proprietary. Um, so I wanted to make a mini version of that, but before I did that, I actually sent him an email along with the plans that said, hey, I know you think this is proprietary, but would you be okay if I made like a 40th scale model of your speaker? And his comment to me was like, uh, why would you want to do that? It's not going to sound the same. And I said, yeah, it's not going to sound the same, but the shape is so unique and it's so cool looking, it's gonna be instantly recognizable as the LX521. So he said, yeah, sure, go ahead. And of course, his famous line is, have fun with it. So uh, I did, and it wasn't until uh, there was a competition in Indianapolis for open baffle speakers that finally motivated me to take Linkwitz's approval and actually build the speaker. So it's a, uh, one uh, 40th scale uh, LX or one 40th scale model of the LX521. Uh, it's a three-way passive uh, speaker that's not DSP uh, because it's passive and I wanted some bass out of it. Uh, we actually determined to make a bass bass reflex speaker out of it. And so the base of that speaker is actually uh, additional seven liters so the total volume in that speaker is about eight liters and i get a f3 of about 40 uh, with some transmission line loading through the base so uh, the mid-range is a uh, dayton rs uh, 100p open baffle and then the tweeter is the uh, uh, dayton nd20 fb rear mount uh, the woofers are a pair of the uh, Dayton ND91s uh, wired in parallel and one opposed to kind of mimic the, uh, the Linkwitz uh, LX521. Uh, Mike Fenus, and it's the Mavericks and it's the Dayton audio category. Well, I think like a lot of us, you know, we can't really afford to go out and buy a $5,000 set of speakers or higher, you know, even $1,500, you know. So uh, I was looking for something that w I could put on my home theater system, but also I like to listen to, uh, you know, my 80s rock and things like that. I still have my amplifier from high school that I use, you know, every day for music listening. Uh, so I wanted something uh, that could work for both my home theater, you know, and my stereo listening. Uh, I don't have a, on my 78, 1978 amplifier, I don't have a subwoofer out. So, you know, I used, you know, two woofers in each cabinet to try to bring some bass out that, you know, cause subwoofer, you know, when those were invented, <laughs> that really changed music really, really a lot. So, uh, didn't have a subwoofer out. So, uh, it went with the double woofers in each box. Um, the layout of the uh, design, uh, I took that from the Dolly Epicon 8s. I uh, really like the layout of those with the uh, midwoofer on top and, uh, uh, you know, the mid-range and tweeter kind of in the center height from like a chair. So, uh, and the cabinet design is more like a clips uh, floor standing, you know, just a basic black, you know, square box. So I'm not a professional woodworker, so I did the best I could with, you know, the skills I had. Um, but yeah, the inspiration came from... Uh, the dollies and I used uh, I used a black vinyl uh, covering on the front that uh, Sonus Faber uses you know I like that look so uh, so I built that into the design it's all Dayton audio most of the uh, uh, capacitors you know I got all that off of uh, Parts Express and a lot of it's the Dayton audio caps my name is Ryan Long and I'm actually from uh, Canton Michigan and the name of my project was Paisley and Riker's Tower Speakers, named after my son and daughter, and uh, they're my inspiration for everything I do. So uh, 
um, named it after them, but by no means do the speakers look like them. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the project was all an idea of, I, I had my home theater and I wasn't happy with the sound that I was getting from my home theater. And uh, I decided it was time for an upgrade, but I couldn't afford an upgrade. So I decided I was gonna attempt to build my own. I had never built a speaker before. Um, and uh, I was tired of not being able to hear the vocal or the, uh, the dialogue. And it made me feel like I was either losing my hearing or just listening to a bad setup. So I said, it's time to change this. And I decided to build my own, watched a couple YouTube videos, uh, did some math and uh, eventually hashed my way through it. And I was really happy with the way it turned out. I thought they sounded all right. I've still got plenty to learn. Um, I need uh, a lot more follow up on measurement tools and things like that. But um, for a first time trial, I was really happy with the way that everything turned out. And I've got a bunch of great compliments from a lot of people around here and learning a lot of things from everybody around here. And uh, it's been a, a great opportunity for me to uh, build some more knowledge and uh, um, build and reinforce some of that skill set. Really happy with uh, everything that's going on today. I knew from the get go that um, I didn't know how to make the speaker function. Um, and I was learning all that by watching YouTube videos. However, I had a clear image of what I wanted it to look like. So uh, I told myself from the beginning that Piano black speakers just always resonated with me and that's what I wanted. I always thought piano black looked incredible. So I said, I'm gonna make a speaker that's piano black. And then the question came down to, do I take it to somewhere professional and have them do it and me not have to worry about it? Or do I try to do it on my own? And being that I'm an engineer and I'm already doing the rest of the project on my own, I figured let's give it a shot. And if I screw it up, I'll take it somewhere else and they can repaint it. Um, so I tried it, it took forever. Uh, first time I tried it, I had to repaint it over and over, probably four or five different times. Uh, but the end result, I was really happy with. And uh, since then I've started to, uh, to really kind of polish up that formula. And uh, it's, uh, by the time I finish these set of speakers, I think I've really got uh, it down. And when I say it down, meaning to a minimum of like a week for polishing up each one, but uh, really happy with the finish. Um, it took a lot of effort, but I would still gladly do it all over again because I just think the looks turned out really, really well. So my name is Keith Etheridge. I brought the Plum Dingers today. It's a desktop MTM design, and I've been building speakers for about seven years now. For a pleasant change, the wife actually needed a pair of speakers. And when the wife says she needs speakers, you build her speakers. So I, I helped her out with this one. She is a dyslexia tutor by trade. And when the pandemic started, she was trying to tutor children over laptop speakers. And if any of you have laptops, the speakers are awful. So she couldn't hear what the children were transposing and couldn't help them as well as she could face to face. So I know how to fix that. We build speakers. We put the tweeter right at your level so you can hear everything nice and clear, even over Zoom. Driver wise, these had the Dayton Audio uh, PS95 point source drivers. I used two of them. Uh, to make an MTM design with the Dayton ND20FB, the or maybe the ND, the rear-mounted version of it, whichever one I can't keep the part number straight. Uh, but I chose those because the full-range drivers could handle everything I wanted them to on their own, but the tweeter itself would add just a little bit of additional clarity on the top end to make sure she was really hearing everything the kids were doing. Uh, and they were all nice and small, so I could get good center-to-center -center spacing on the design and still have it fit on a desktop and not be a giant speaker because that would have overwhelmed her and nobody wants that. Okay, these my name's Tony Hartman and these are the Vespers. I call them that because I would I picture monks and stuff would be chanting and I think these would sound really good with that kind of uh, music coming through them. I, uh, I originally had the little less baffle step in them and I raised it up a little bit, made a little bigger box for these that I had them in before and they, they have a lot of bass in them now and I like that, hopefully not too much. I was uh, pleasantly surprised, not really, but uh, how nice and clean the, the esoteric sounded compared to some uh, high dolly speakers, some Scan Speaks and some CS uh, Excel series. The, these are right up there with that, and they're a lot less. These are like, well, they were 140 a, a piece, and the other ones are 300 a piece. And these are very competitive. 